Only a boy named David, only a little sling. One little stone went in the sling and the giant came tumbling down. Do you know the children's song? If you're a parent or grandparent, I don't need to remind you that children today face giants in many forms. My guest says it's vital that we train our children yeah. to become giant killers. Bill Johnson is a fifth generation pastor. He and his wife, Benny, are senior leaders of Bethel Church in California. You've got to see their family. Three married children uh, and their spouses working in the church, 10 grandchildren. What a great photo. Bill, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so from much. From Reading. Uh, it's great to be here. You are calling us to <clears throat> intentional parenting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If, if you don't live intentionally, you are influenced and controlled by the culture around you. And so we have to live really with the mandate of heaven to replicate, to demonstrate what his world is like in the raising of kids. Call out the gold. Yeah. I love that. Call out yeah. the gold. This is about watching for the, the gifting and the, yeah. uh, the emerging child through yeah. the seasons. Yeah, there's so many seeds of significance in the heart of every child and learning to recognize those and call them out without trying to manipulate or control. But just to, it, it's speaking words of affirmation, but it's followed by <clears throat> support and uh, empowering children to learn how to be strong and capable in their area of gifting. Now your goal <clears throat> is world shapers. Absolutely. Nothing less. Yeah, 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 nothing less. Yeah, we have one life. We've got to, we've got to do it well and raise our kids for significance. Every, you know, children dream of greatness always. You know, they put a Superman cape on or a Wonder Woman or something. And, it's the era you know, of superheroes. Yeah, that, they, that's what they naturally dream of. And it's a God-given dream. We just have to define what greatness in the kingdom looks like. Now, you're not living in a dream. Uh, you remind us that we're born into a war. It's true. Spiritual war zone. It's true, spiritual war. But it's a war that's already been won. So we're learning to live from the victory of Christ towards the challenges of life. Mm. You've said something that uh, maybe I needed to re be reminded. Self-confidence is no greater than self. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot out there to motivate you and to make you confident. And self-confidence is no greater than self. No, it's true. We have something better. That's true. It, there's, a, there, there's a confidence in God that brings out all of who he made me to be. So it's not like self isn't important. It's just, uh, it's important as I depend on him, as I learn to represent him well, as I learn to demonstrate who he is. Uh, the resurrected Christ lives in me. He wants out. He wants to flow through me to impact the world around me. I love your term. Yeah. We represent. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We re present Christ yeah. everywhere we go. Yeah, that's it, yeah. But we're in a world that is making adults scared. Yeah, yeah. People are waking up anxious many <laughs> days. True. Uh, you have so much to say about not being intimidated by what we see around us. Well, it's easy to become afraid of the, of the horrible things that are going on around us because they are bad. But when that happens, I have to become more impressed with God than the problem I face. The enemy wants me to react to a problem because then I lose sight of the solutions I carry. Um, Jesus never reacted to the devil. He only responded to the Father. And he sets the stage for how we're to do life, responding to the Father. He only did what he saw his Father do. He only said what he heard his Father say. And that's, God's prepared to do that for job. us. Absolutely. The giants, <laughs> we could list plenty, but you know, the <laughs> first one that comes to mind, one that I dealt with as my kids were growing up is, well, you've got to get their attention. Yeah, attention, you've got to engage them. Social media, just for starters, is huge competition. You have to get them away from the devices. Yeah, start young, you know, start young. Just start uh, when they're young, teaching just the value of family, of relationships, of interaction with people. Um, the social media isn't all evil. It does help them develop certain skills, learn to recognize what those skills are. Uh, kids are learning, for example, to learn to communicate by texting. They're learning to communicate in print. So they may become some of the best writers in the days ahead. So learn to, uh, to emphasize the strength that God has in a movement, but also uh, you know, bring to life, to the forefront, the value of interaction with people. And, and you do that by interacting with them. You do that. 
dinner time. Don't give, a, give yeah, up yeah. on the meal times, right? Yeah, yeah, you need yeah. that. We did Aslan on the move. Where did you see Aslan? Jesus on the move today yeah. in your life. Yeah. So expecting God. Yeah. Uh, and, and I love that you said, um, refuse to be impressed by the giants yeah. we face. Yeah. We need to, to help our children discover the David in yeah. them. Yeah. David, the last, the forgotten, the little guy, the, the mocked. Um, what about the bullied child? Well, Did you have that in your parenting? Uh, no, our, our, none of our kids were bullied, so we didn't face that, that particular giant. They need to find the David. Absolutely. It's an issue of identity, first of all, um, that we, we reinforce the significance of each child and the gifting that God has given them and that no opposition. We can't always control what we face from the outside, but we can control response. And uh, sometimes it's a legal issue. You go to school authorities or whatever, and that's appropriate. That's, it's, it's important that that's done. Um, our children need to know that we're standing with them. Uh, we don't want to make them afraid to come to us with issues like that. And so we, uh, but we dialogue with them. We uh, interact with them and uh, do everything we can in the, in the natural to protect them, but also to really reinforce who God has made them to be. And that, that's not done in an evening of conversation. You know, that's done as a lifestyle a and calling out that greatness, that significance. Mm -hmm. You know, all the disciples that hung out with Jesus started feeling significant. They got it wrong because they argued as to who was the greatest. But the point was being with Jesus brought out desires in them that, uh, that they had probably never had before. You are very authentic <coughs> in this book. And by the way, it's so comprehensive. I th this is like an encyclopedia mm. on parenting. Mm. You cover everything with appendixes that, mm. uh, that offer practical, applicable mm -hmm. uh, yeah. tools good. for the parent. Yeah. Very helpful. Uh, it was good to be reminded. <laughs> uh, David was a giant killer, but he wasn't a perfect parent. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, he had, he had some real challenges. In fact, I don't, I don't consider him real successful until he had Solomon. Hmm. Solomon, he, he intentionally parented. He, he spoke the seeds of significance into his life when he was just a small child. And he told him, he says, you know, as you're growing, choose wisdom and in your wisdom get understanding. And he prepared him. He actually prepared Solomon for his divine moment hmm. when God gave him an option. He could have anything he wanted. My conviction is he's the only one that was given that option because he's the only one that was prepared to make the right choice. Ooh. I'm going to percolate on that a moment. <laughs> yeah. When is it too late, Bill? Well, it's never too late. God's a restorer. You know, I mean, all of us are broken people that he has healed. And, Amen. Uh, yeah, and so it doesn't matter if it's uh, kids are raised and out of the house. Um, if uh, you're a grandparent or a great-grandparent, you always have a place of influence. And you always have the, the ultimate place of influence is prayer, is where we intercede and pray for our children, our grandchildren. Uh, my wife and I take communion frequently, uh, almost every day. And, uh, and we, when we do, we pray specifically for each of our, our children, our grandchildren. We, do, we cover them in prayer. We, we pray the Jeremiah 24 prayer that God would give them a heart to know Him. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter their age. It's, they're, still always, they're still always our kids or our grandkids or great grandkids, if that's the case. This book will help you and we would love to pray for you and for your children or grandchildren. Call our prayer lines right now. Bill Johnson, yeah. thank you. Yeah, another, another bestseller, I'm sure. Thanks. God Thanks bless so you. Much. Bless you too. Thanks.